Park. Most people come here to buy arrangements for people they care about or to stop by and pick up quick bouquets from the wrap table. But I'm going to show you in this video how you can make professional but basic floral arrangements all on your own. So one benefit of learning to design your own flowers is that the cost goes into the flowers, not into design fees. Flowers shouldn't have to be for special occasions only, and by designing them yourself, you can make it affordable. So flowers come in a variety of containers. You can find simple ones at your local florist, like the one I'll show you later, that are inexpensive. Or you can search your own cupboards at home and thrift stores and find unique containers that way. The long and short of it is that you save money and you can buy flowers more often and for more reasons. One other benefit to arranging flowers yourself is that you can add a personal touch. You know the recipient better than anyone else does. And it will mean more to the person you're giving them to knowing that you made them with your own hands. And besides that, they smell so nice. So even though flower design is both science and art, you can learn how to make a simple bud vase. It goes in a vase like this, so-called, because it only holds one bud or a couple of blooms. You can learn to make an arrangement like this in five fairly easy steps. And I'm gonna walk you through those. The other nice thing is that bud vases are good for practicing the technical aspects of flower arranging, like the physical placement of blooms as well as the artistic shape of an arrangement. Stage one, choosing your flowers. For our bud vase, we are going to need four things. The first thing we're going to need are roses. And you see there are a lot of options. You might be tempted to buy a single stem rose bouquet, but you can actually save money by going with a package of roses that has five or six in it. You can always use the spares for other arrangements or around your house, but it's cheaper to purchase roses this way. If you look at some of these roses, there are some that are a bit more open and then there are some that are firmer, like these beautiful red ones right here. We look for a firm rose because that means that it hasn't finished opening up all the way yet. So if we were going to start making our bud vase, we would take a bunch like this and we would take it to our counter and we would purchase it. So we have our roses, but we need something to hold them in place in our vase and that's where our greenery comes in. Now, greenery selection can be very overwhelming. That's why you would want to ask your floral clerk to help get these items for you. I suggest you start with a very garden variety greenery called Leatherleaf. It's nice because it holds things in place well and it has a very structured shape, which will help you structure your flower arrangement. Now, you need for our arrangement three nice, sturdy leaves. You don't want wimpy leaves. You can take fronds off if they're too big, but there's nothing you can do about wimpy leather. And if you like things to be shiny, florists have a trick. It's called shine spray. They can spray it on your leaves for you if you prefer them shiny. We'll also need one full stem of baby's breath. This is an easy to filler to work with as a beginner because it breaks into so many nice pieces. It's also inexpensive because you only need one stem to fill up your entire bud vase. Now, sometimes this baby's breath might be out on the sales floor with the other packaged flowers, but other times you may have to ask a floral clerk to help you find it. It's inexpensive and takes up a lot of space, which is why we like it in a bud vase. The last thing that we need is a vase, of course. If you don't already have one at home, 
you will want to pick one up from either a thrift store or your floral shop or even a craft store may have them. One thing you need to remember about vases, especially for this project, is that people often get the wrong size of vase for the job. You need a vase with a small opening if you're only using a few stems. A large vase with only a few stems of flowers will need lots of greenery to keep the flowers where you put them. Vases can be other shapes, possibly shorter, but the size of the neck needs to have a one to one quarter inch diameter to accomplish the look we're designing today. Something else that ties back into the science part of our floral design are floral food packets. These may be on the counter where you can grab them. They may even have one attached to the flowers that you buy, but you can always ask your florist for more whenever you need some. Now that we have all of our items, we're able to make a bud base. I'm gonna get these paid for and I'm gonna take them home and I'll see you there as we put together our beautiful flower arrangement. Welcome back. So we have our flowers, we've brought them home, and we're ready to start stage two of making our bud vase. And stage two is important because it deals with the science of flowers. We're going to be gathering the kinds of materials we need to ensure that we make the freshest, most long-lasting bud vase that we can. And to do that, we have to understand what uh, keeps our flowers fresh and how they operate. So for this stage, you're gonna need an apron to protect your clothes, always a good thing when working with flowers. And you'll also need some very um, special tools. First, you're going to need uh, either some very sharp scissors or some sharp clippers or garden cutters. Sharpness is important because flower stems are like straws. It's the vein of the flower and it's how they suck up their nutrients and their water. If we don't have a clean cut, we can smash the ends of the flower and then it can't drink. Then our flowers die very quickly. So having a sharp implement is important, that way we have a clean cut and the flower can still drink water. Because our flowers are like straws and they suck up the nutrients needed to make these beautiful petals open and bloom, we also have to have the proper amount of water and um, to mix with our floral food. So you'll also need a quart of water in either a measuring cup or a pitcher. You'll need your floral packet and a spoon. To mix our water, it's very simple. We follow the directions on the actual packet. This packet is for a quart of water. It's just like mixing up Kool-Aid, right? Dump it in, make sure it all gets in there, and then you stir it up. Now the reason that we need floral water is because flowers, like people, need water and they need nutrients. So when we are working with flowers, we want them to have nutrient-rich water to drink, but those same nutrients attract bacteria. And bacteria can cloudy the water in our vase, it can block up our flower stems and cause our flowers to die sooner. So we have floral food, and this packet of floral food has exactly the right amount of nutrients to bacteria-killing agents. If you mix it correctly, this water will help keep your flowers fresh. However, if you mix it incorrectly, it can actually be detrimental to the life of your arrangement. So once we've got our water mixed, we're ready to fill our vase. Our vase is very clean, as you can see. We don't want to encourage bacteria growth, so we want to make sure our vase is clean. And then I'm going to fill my vase to about an inch from the top, because going back to science, when I put the flower stems in, they will displace the water. And if we have it too full, we'll have a mess on our hands. Now here's a pro tip for you. This perfectly mixed floral water, we can put this in our refrigerator and keep it for days. And then anytime your vase water gets low or starts to look dirty, you can actually dump out the old water and put in fresh new cold water, which will keep your flowers looking uh, better longer. 
So now that we have our vase full and all of the materials, it's time to prepare our flowers. So now we're on to our next step, and that is preparing the flowers. So once I purchased my flowers, I brought them home and I put them in water. They stay in water so that they don't suck up air, right? If you think of a stem like a vein, air in the veins is not a good thing. It's not good for flowers either. It creates an air bubble. By staying in water, they're only drinking water, and that's okay. But there are still some things we need to do to these roses so that we can design with them successfully and not contaminate our water. The first thing, we want to look and see if there's any greenery that might fall below the water line. This most certainly would, so I'm just going to take it off. These lovely greens, however, will be above the water line, and we should leave them on because it encourages water to come up the stem and it makes our arrangement look more full. So the other thing, you'll notice that this poor rose is a little beat up. That's okay. These outside layer of petals are called the guard petals, and we take them off by simply bending them back and picking them off. And you can take up to four petals off a rose to clean it up, right? This is what makes our arrangements look professional. Now, here's a thrifty tip. If you pluck several roses and you have some petals, save them for decoration on a fancy dinner or for your bath or to dry and put in sachets. Don't waste petals. There's one more thing. We all know that roses have thorns. And besides being uncomfortable to your fingers, they also pose a problem when designing because they snag on the greenery in your vase, disrupting the beautiful uh, setup you've laid out. So you can take your clippers and you just come alongside to these thorns and you trim their jagged ends off just like so. And then they're clean and they'll smoothly go into our vase wherever we put them. But that's not the only thing that we have to do. We have our beautiful greenery here. And this particular greenery, called leather leaf, is often prone to having a dirty stem. It's the fluff that comes off it. So we run our fingers down it just like this to make sure it's nice and clean. And yes, you can wipe your hands on your apron. That's what it's there for. So now that my greenery is clean, I know it's not going to contaminate my water. And I'm ready to start building our beautiful arrangement. Now that we are in the fourth stage of our bud vase, it's time to start putting flowers into a vase. But before we do that, we have to plan. We need to know what kind of an arrangement we are making. We are making a one-sided arrangement. That means that only one side of the flowers will remain focal. And when we get ready to put our greenery in, it's important to know this because we want to create a finished back. By doing putting two pieces of leather leaf together, our two fluffiest, tallest pieces, we create both a back and a front that looks tidy and finished. And we want these to be tall because we want our arrangement to be almost the full height of our vase, doubled. So we're going to measure against our vase and see about where our greenery meets the neck of the vase. And eyeballing that with the bottom of my vase, I'm going to make my two cuts at a slant and put my leaves immediately into water. So here we have our foundation, but you can see they're a bit wobbly. That's what our third leaf does. Our third leaf is going to allow us to slip this stem in crossways and create a foundation that's going to hold things in place. So we want this to be a little bit lower on our arrangement. And we want it to come off to the side a little bit to create that fan shape that we're going to place our flowers in later. So I'm going to gauge my height. I want it to be probably about right there, looking at the bottom of my vase. And then I'm going to make my mark. And then I'm going to place this flower into the vase where it crisscrosses stems and you'll notice some of the greenery goes down in the neck and what that does is it secures our greenery in place. So now we can 
fluff it around a little bit until it creates this nice fan shape. And you see how much sturdier this is? Those leaves aren't going anywhere. Now we have roses. Roses are very beautiful and they have a unique shape in that they have a bloom right here at the top and not much else in between. So we're going to make use of that. When nature actually has flowers on plants, they tend to grow staggered. And that's one of the key shapes that florists use to make things look professional and well-designed while mimicking the way nature grows. So we want a nice, tall, straight rose to be our very top rose. I think this one looks fantastic. We want the height on this, right? Because we want this rose to be right at the top of this greenery. So it looks tall and elegant. So what I'm gonna do is take off only the minimal amount to make my ends clean and get rid of any possible air bubbles. If you look, I'm going to cut these at a slant, like this. And the reason I'm taking off uh, the end of my stem at a slant is to optimize the amount of surface area that my rose can then drink from. It also keeps the rose standing on its tiptoes in the vase so that it never gets clogged and can always drink. So when I put this top rose in, I'm not just going to plonk it down in the middle. I want it to be kind of at the back of my one-sided arrangement. So as I turn to the side, you'll be able to see that this rose is going to go in kind of between this greenery and down into my vase, like so. Now you'll notice this granary is doing its job, right? It's holding this rose up nice and tall. And I can mess with it and put it to whatever height I need it to be. So now we have our back middle rose. If we're going to stagger our roses, we're going to want one about here to where the top of the rose comes to the bottom of the other one, but is off to the side, almost like you're making a pyramid. Then our final rose will need to come down a bit lower and be on the other side to where we have essentially a staggered triangle. So, just like I did with the first one, I'm going to look at my vase. I'm going to see what I need to take off. Again, very little, just enough to clean up the ends, cut it at an angle, and then I'm going to place this rose. I'm also going to use that greenery and I'm going to stick it kind of in between the greenery so that it comes to the side and it stays in place firmly. And now we have our final rose. This can sometimes be a little bit tricky because your vase is starting to get a little fuller now, but now we actually have to take off some stem length. So you can see I'm going to figure out where I want my rose, and I'm going to look and say that I need to take off probably about an inch in order for it to go in smoothly. So then I make that cut, and again, I place the rose in, at an angle into the base made by the greens. Now you'll notice I'm getting a little feedback here. This is where you have to mess with your flowers, right? They don't just go in place perfectly every time. But just a little bit of finagling and a little change in height and I've got three perfectly staggered roses. So you may think this looks like it's done, but we still have one more thing to add and that is our baby's breath. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment and show you about baby's breath, right? This is what looks to be an unwieldy stem of wild flowers, and you're probably wondering how I'm going to put it in this arrangement and make it look, well, neat and tidy. And that's because I'm not going to keep it as, as a whole. If you notice, this comes down into a V here. I'm going to be very brave and I'm going to cut this into two pieces. Because I have such a sturdy back and foundation for my roses, I can take this nice long piece that lays flat and I can put it in the vase near the top of my top rose and it will fill in this top and middle section. Then I'm going to take and trim up my fluffier piece and I'll insert it closer down here to the base so that it fills in the lower section. Now this part, again, you might experience a little resistance because 
there's a lot of stems already in this base, but we'd rather have it be full and staying in place than not full enough and flopping everywhere. So I've made a trim in my baby's breath, cut it at a slant just like I do my roses, and you see I can hold it up and tell right where I want it to go on the arrangement. So now I'm going to slide it in, kind of following the path of the stem of my back lead rose. And the great thing about this baby's breath is that while it is fragile because these beautiful blooms are so thin, it also makes it easy to work around and in our arrangement. Now that we have the top piece of baby's breath in place, we need to fill in with the bottom piece. Now this might be a little too much greenery, right? We don't want, I mean filler, we don't want the filler to detract from our roses. We want our filler to accentuate but not cover them. So what I think I'm going to do, because I'm judging by my arrangement, I'm going to take this side piece off. It's beautiful and I can save it. I could use it to make a little tiny bud vase with some of my extra roses from the package that I bought in the store. But for this arrangement, it will be too much. And that's something that you have to judge with every arrangement. That's why there's an artistic element to this as well as a scientific one. Now that I have my last piece of baby's breath cut, um, I'm going to double check its size. And this looks like it should be just about right. Maybe we need to take off just a half an inch more. That way it has some room. You want your stems to be far down in the vase. That way, in case your flowers drink really fast and while you're gone to work they drink all their water, your stems aren't way up high and not able to drink. But we also don't want them so far down in the vase that um, they hit the bottom and might not be able to drink. So you see that I gently placed this final stem in, in the front, in front of my rose so that it comes to about the bottom of my lowest rose. Now this is a finished arrangement, right? We've got everything in line, we've got our greenery where we want it, and we've got plenty of beautiful baby's breath. But there are ways that you can take this to a wow level. So in our final stage of making a bud vase, these parts are optional. You don't have to personalize it in different ways. If you like the clean look of a simple bud vase, you can leave it as such. But if this is your first foray into the world of floral design, there are some things that you can do uh, to create unique looks. For instance, ribbons, right? I know you've probably seen big old fluffy floral bows. Now those, that's a whole nother video's worth of learning how to do. But everybody can pretty much tie their shoe. And that's all you need to do to be able to add a ribbon to a vase like this one. So you can pick a ribbon that matches, like the red, or maybe that contrasts, like the purple. Or, if you know the person you're giving it to, you can pick something that reflects their personality, like this beautiful, bright fall orange and red. It's so easy. All I'm going to do, I'm going to step to the side so you can see me do it, is tie it just like you were going to tie your shoes. So you make a loop, pull it through. Now I can't leave it like that, but it's really easy. This is you just come around and you play with it until you get the bows all fluffed out. And then you can put your tails in place. This ribbon is a wired ribbon. I happen to have it lying around, but you can pick up a variety of different ribbons on sale at craft stores, sometimes for super cheap. And then you'll see I'm just going to take my tails and give them a nice clean cut at an angle, which makes them look very professional. So now I've got this fabulous bow that enhances my arrangement, but what if I told you you can do even more? Um, you may have things like peacock feathers laying around. Maybe you have that old vase of peacock feathers in the basement. You can use these in floral arrangements. They're super popular. You would just put them in like you would a flower. I'm not going to use them in this arrangement because I don't think they go with my bow. But you can also find interesting pieces of decor like these glittery ting swirls. 
These could go in an arrangement just like the flowers, you poke them in and they add a bit of pizzazz. So if you know the person likes glitter, you can look at craft stores for items like these or even ask your local florist. They often have some that they're willing to sell to you. But I know that my recipient likes twigs. Twigs are a huge thing in the floral world and you can purchase twigs at your floral shop, but I recommend that you just go out into your own yard and poke around. That's where I found these. And twigs are fun because they're interesting and they bring that bit of nature into our arrangement. So I like this one. It's short. I don't even have to cut this twig because it's already dry. It's not going to drink. So I'm just going to tuck it in wherever I can get it to fit securely. It doesn't even have to be in the water. And now I want to balance that out. So I'm going to cut my twig and I'm going to take off these little nubs that are going to cause problems down in the greenery of the vase so it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to tuck it in maybe a little bit higher, kind of mimicking the shape of my roses and my greenery, and on the other side. So now I have twigs that balance out the shape of my roses. And for free, you've just made your entire arrangement almost two inches taller. And in the floral world, tall equals elegant. So now that we have twigs and we have ribbon, there's one more thing. Now I forgot to stop and pick up a card to put in my arrangement when I was at the store the other day. If I had, I would have picked up something like this. We call this a card pick. And your card sits right here in these little tines. Um, but I didn't pick up a card. But you know what? I have construction paper. So I made a card. This particular arrangement is to my mom, with love, from me. So I'm going to take this card and I'm going to slide it just like that to where it sits on my pick. Now if I didn't have one of these plastic picks, I could very easily take this card, put a piece of tape on the back, and tape it to this twig. Same job, slightly different way to do it. But I'm going to use this card pick and I'm going to put the card on there and I'm going to decide where it needs to be. We have a nice little hole right here and I'm going to bring it in, slide it down so that it goes in the arrangement, sits next to my roses, and I chose a piece of paper that coordinated with my bow to tie the colors together. So this is one example of a bud vase that anyone can make. You've learned the science behind it and you've also learned the design elements behind it. Uh, you can certainly take this same principle and try it out with different flowers, flowers that are taller and skinnier, or some maybe that have a bigger bloom. That's the artistic part, and that's what you can start to have fun with once you get the basics down. Thank you for joining us, and happy designing!